Okay, hi, suddenly it's 2024. It is officially the season of people showing all the things that they made in the last year. I thought I would show you the things that I've made to you and also talk about what ended up being my favorite projects or my most worn projects. I actually did a video showing everything that I knit up until I think May. So I'll link that here if you want to like see more details about any of those knits. So this one, I'm just going to go through all the things I've made since then and then also share with you what are the projects I ended up actually wearing the most because sometimes when you're making something you don't know. If you got it right, you don't know if this will actually be something that you reach for. I'm personally trying to knit and design for my own wardrobe, so that metric is important to me. It might not be important to you, but I think it's fun to look back, kind of take stock of the things that I made, the creativity that I expressed, and then also be able to sort of like, in hindsight, say, why do I think I did or didn't reach for things? It helps inform whatever I'm gonna make next. I'm gonna go in chronological order, picking up where I left off in my previous video. Let's go into the knit. So first tank off my needles, after the last video I posted was this tank that I guess in my head I called the Odette tank. I made it as kind of in a theme. I was feeling very inspired by Swan Lake this past year. So I had a lot of like black and white knits and a lot of ribbon details like you can see on the straps here. Beauty blogger here. There you go. There's like a little ribbon corset detail along each strap um, and that's with little yarn overholes along the length of the strap. So I knit this one with Cascade Anchor Bay yarn, which is a blend of cotton and superwash wool. Um, the construction for this one was I cast on at a provisional cast on along the bust, and then I knit the straps up because I thought that would be a little bit easier to like shape this um, square neckline. I also, maybe this is like a technique issue for me, but I find casting off to be a little bit neater and more like structurally stable than when I cast on a lot of stitches along a neckline. So that was another reason that I wanted to do it that way. Um, and then the reason that I didn't do it fully bottom up is I like to adjust the length as I go. I wasn't sure what shaping I wanted to use and I wanted to like know faster if like the top part of the tank was cute before I knit all the way down. I had a little snafu with this one because I used a red yarn to uh, do the provisional cast on because it's like nice to have a contrasty yarn, but I've never had done one like that with um, a white yarn before and little red fibers from the provisional cast on made this like pink line all the way across the bust. So that was a little bit annoying. I had to do a little bit of like surgery to pick up the stitches above the provisional cast on and then cut off the final you know, a couple yards that were all pink tinged. Um, so let that be a lesson learned, I guess. Um, I added like an I-cord edge along the straps um, just to kind of like stabilize the stockinette from curling a little bit more. And I added some shaping along the underarms, just like some simple decreasing down to the waist and then a little bit of increasing at the hips. And then I finished it with a folded hem. So I didn't wear this top at all this year, and I know why. So there were, there were a couple issues. One is I ended up deciding I don't love this yarn for a summer top. It is cotton blend, but it's, um, I think this is like a DK weight yarn, but it just felt a little bit too heavy for me for a summer top. But the main problem with it was that I had too much negative ease. So it's comfortable to wear, it's not too tight, but I think it just looks a little bit too stretched for me. Um, and ease, if you're not like familiar with that knitting term yet, it's the difference between the measurements of the top off of your body and your actual body. So something with positive ease is bigger than your body, so it's like a baggy sweater, for instance. And something with negative ease means that it actually has to stretch to fit your body, which makes it very form-fitting. This one had too much negative ease, and I'm trying to remember why that is. I think that, first of all, I just didn't know as much about negative ease then as I do now. I think I've just learned so much more about what I like and what looks good and what feels comfortable and what's like too much stretch. I'm way better at deciding things from my gauge swatch than I was before. I thought that this yarn would stretch more than it did when I was blocking it because um, superwash tends to stretch when it gets wet and so can cotton yarns. So I think I expected this to loosen up more than it did. So it ended up quite a bit tighter than I thought it would. I feel like at this point of the year, I was doing kind of like trial and error still with my gauge. Um, rather than like, I don't know, really manhandling my swatch, taking the gauge before and after uh, blocking, for instance. I just feel like I'm a lot more um, deliberate about the things I do now. So this one, unfortunately, was kind of a uh, loss for me. I also feel like the way that I did these straps, I, I look at it now and I do think that it's pretty cute, but at the time I wasn't fully happy with it. I think because I had originally envisioned this top having like a space between the straps, 
where you could really see the ribbon crisscross. And then I decided that wouldn't be very bra friendly. Um, and then I originally tried wearing this with like a more contrasting ribbon and it felt like too much to me. But I think that this white on cream is actually pretty and kind of delicate. So I'm back to liking it. And I like the silhouette of the top, to be honest. Like I like, I love a square neckline with thick straps. Um, so yeah, I don't know. All in all, I have mixed feelings about this top. Like, I wish I did it in a lighter weight yarn so that it just felt a little drapier and like better for summer. And I wish I used less ease. Like ribbing is a different story because ribbing just stretches so much. But for stockinette, um, it is stretchy, but like you're really pulling against it. And if you stretch it too much, um, the stitches just start to like kind of pull apart. And I just don't think that looks as good. So those are my lessons learned from this one. And I'm gonna rank this one as didn't wear it. That sucks. <laughs> so the next thing that I made, I never even wove the ends in on this because I knew as soon as I cast it off that I wasn't happy with it. <laughs> this is a tube top that I knit flat in one piece. This is using sea change fiber yarn in a uh, sport weight. It's a silk wool blend and it's in the colorway Odile, which is actually the name of the black swan, whereas Odette was the name of the white swan. So that just felt like a sign that I should go for it. And then I got this ribbon um, from the same yarn shop, Brooklyn General. And I think it's really pretty. It's like kind of a little, almost like a little eyelet I got them to go together and I knit this flat in one panel, um, just going back and forth. And then the side seam is just open and I wove the ribbon through to tie it up. I added a folded hem on the top and the bottom. And I'm not really happy with the folded hem on the bottom. Um, I've changed the way that I do folded hems on the bottom now. I used to cast off on the row that I was folding the hem on. And I find that that tends to flip up a lot. Like you can see here, this just does not want to stay down. So now I tend to just cast off and seam my folded hems up and I find that works a lot better, but I hadn't tried that yet and I was like very averse to seaming at the time. I also added some short row bust darts because um, this is like a tube top basically, so the distance that it has to go along the front is gonna be longer than down your straight back. And then also I find with tube tops, you just like naturally kind of want to wear it angled like this which means that you would also want more length in the front anyway, because you're kind of wearing it at that angle. So I decided um, after adding horizontal or short row bust starts to my thine own top and experimenting with that and being really happy and that's also like a tube top, I thought that they would work perfectly for this one. Um, and they do, I am happy with the way that that works. I didn't quite space them out wide enough. I was like kind of struggling with the ease on this one too. Um, and then I also added some short rows just along the very front here because I wanted this to like kind of like angle down farther. So there would be a sort of like a cut across and like a little bit of asymmetry. So honestly, I still think that this is a really cute idea. So the big problem with this one was that I messed up the negative ease. So I did this one kind of like neutral ease. Uh, for some reason, I literally just forgot to think about <laughs> the fact that it's a tube top and it's not gonna have straps. You like want something to kind of hold it up. So basically it just ended up feeling quite a bit looser than I wanted it to. The reason that I like didn't notice this as it was happening was that I, I cast this one on on a train ride. Normally I like try things on a lot as I go, but because of that particular circumstance, I didn't end up getting the chance to do it as much. So I honestly think that this is a very cute idea. I still love the little ribbon side detail. I still love the asymmetry of how it cuts in the front. I still love this yarn. To be honest, it's not the most practical item that you might wear. Like a tube top that's in a knit wool fabric is sort of like, I guess you'd only really wear that out in the fall or winter maybe with a layer on top. Um, so it's not like the most wearable piece anyway. So that was another reason that I kind of like let it go. I felt like for both of these, because I was feeling very inspired by Swan Lake, it felt like I had a creative vision, I guess I wanted to execute and having this little like mini collection. Um, so I don't like regret the time that I spent on it because I do think that there's value in creating for the sake of creating. And I think that a lot of us are making things that we want to wear in our wardrobes. And I'm so happy when I make something that feels like creatively fulfilling and I want to wear it all the time. But I don't know. I don't feel too bad about having made some things that I don't, I didn't end up wearing because um, I don't know, I guess like I made them for the right reasons, which was that I was feeling inspired. And I mean, the actual materials like yarn is very, very reusable in ways that fabrics for sewing aren't, paints aren't, etc. So I can just always unwind these and use the yarn to knit something else in the future. And I do that pretty often with things that I don't wear. So, okay, so actually bear with me because I feel like I went through a little rough patch right at the beginning of the summer where I was making things and not ending up very happy with the fit. 
I swear, if you hold on to the end, I am really, really happy with most of the projects that I did within the last couple months, like some of my favorite things I've ever made. So don't, don't lose hope. And let me uh, segue that into some more things that I didn't wear that I didn't end up being that happy with and got frustrated with and just left because um, I was annoyed. And I also think that's okay, by the way. I have no problem with like putting down a project that is leaving me frustrated and trusting that if that creative spark is still there, if this is a thing that I want in my wardrobe or a thing that I like really feel the itch to create, that I will eventually come back to it. I don't know, I don't think that you should like have too much guilt in your hobby, basically. So this one is a little set that I made. Um, I actually made two versions of the top because I wasn't happy with the first one, but I'm not happy with the second one either. This top is made with a little bit of Cascade Anchor Bay, that's the white part, and then this blue part is uh, Drops Cotton Merino, which is 50-50 cotton and merino blend. Um, I had a lot of this Drops Cotton Merino just in my stash. I bought a bunch of it because I was thinking about making some other project that didn't work out, and so I just had like a huge amount left over, so I was kind of looking for reasons to knit from my stash. And I came up with this idea of a set that was like kind of tennis inspired. I don't know, I was playing a lot of tennis this summer and um, I was kind of inspired by this like active wear dress that I saw from Reformation. So the idea behind it was that it would be a little set and this would be the tube top that you could also attach straps to and then there would be a matching skirt and you could wear them a bunch of different ways. Like you could wear it as just a tube top, you could wear it as a tank top, you could wear it as a tube dress a tank dress, you can wear the skirt alone. So I do stand by that idea. I think that like a mix and match set is very um, versatile. And I really like the idea of like adding and removing things to your clothing so that you can wear them in different ways. The problem with this one was my ease was off. So this was the first version that I made and um, it just ended up being a bit baggy. I think on the first version that I made, I didn't add any short rows. I do think that short rows are really nice for tube tops. So I had wished that I had added some, um, but this ended up just being too baggy, even when I tried to shrink it in the dryer. And then I also wasn't happy with this top folded hem um, is just curling over on itself. And like I said, this was kind of, I think this was kind of the turning point of when I decided that I actually really like seaming a folded hem down rather than knitting it into place. And again, I, I just like had all this resistance to seaming at the time. <laughs> um, but I do think that it works better for folded hems. Um, and it's annoying because this is the very first thing that you knit. So I would have to do some like surgery to pick that back up and do it again differently. And so I just got a little bit annoyed of that, but I did experiment with using these little, um, they're called welts, where you basically have like a tiny folded hem partway through your work. So it's like three dimensional. And I thought that that looked really like piping details, which I think can have kind of a cool preppy effect. So I actually really, still like this general idea and maybe this is something that I'll come back to but this was the first version just too big but I had so much yarn that I was like rather than unraveling this because that frustrates me right now why don't I just cast on a new one then I made a second one I fixed the way that I closed this top welt and I seamed it down with whip stitch afterwards instead of closing it as I worked it which you can see on this one which leaves more of a fold over and it like shows blue at the top versus this one still folds over a little bit um i didn't really block this pinning it but i think it's a lot better but i made other problem i made other issues on this one so um i also added bus starts but for some reason i calculated it wrong and i brought the bus starts too far into the center and i didn't notice it when i was trying it on as i was working on it and it's also just too cropped for me it's like an inch or two more cropped than i wanted and um, again, I like made this too tight. I had too much negative ease and I don't like how much it has to stretch. I just don't think it makes the welts, like the little piping detail look as pretty because when you really stretch it out, you just see too much space between the stitches. So I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> and that's a bummer. I do think that this is still a cute concept. And I like this sort of like sporty, retro, vintage athletic look. So maybe this is something that I'll revisit this spring. At the same time, I was working on this skirt. Um, and again, I have kind of mixed feelings about this skirt. So I did finish it in that I, I seamed things, I wove in the ends and I added an elastic to the top of this waistband. Um, I really like that effect. It looks uh, just like a folded hem, but you have a thick elastic waistband in there and that helps like give you enough stretch to get over your hips, but like keeps it snug at your waist. However, um, I wish that I had started the increases more towards the top and had this look more like an A-line. Um, I evenly spaced the increases, but I feel like it doesn't quite look that way. 
And me personally, I feel like I wish I had a little bit more volume on this skirt at the top. So I kind of regret that. Um, I added the same little welts at the bottom hem. I would pin those straight to make them look a little bit more distinct. Um, but I do think that the set idea is still really cute together. I made the executive decision to just abandon this entire set for the time being. I just felt so annoyed with it. <laughs> but um, that's totally fine. I do think I might come back to this one too. I don't know. Like I, I really, now that I've had space from all of these projects, I do still like them. I think there's like a nugget of good inspiration in them. It was just the execution wasn't exactly enough to make me really happy with them. But I do still think that this is a cute concept. And I really like the idea of mix and match stuff that works cohesively together, but also works as separates. Um, I guess I wore this one in a couple of videos, but again, this one is just so, so cropped. I still wear a lot of high-waisted things. I know that like waist rises are starting to creep downwards again for a lot of people. I still really like high waist, but this one is like an inch or two above where my highest waisted pants and skirts end, and that's just not as cropped as I would want it to be. I wish that it was a little bit lower. I've shown this quite a bit on my channel, but this is what I ended up publishing a pattern for called the Ophelia Blast. So I cast this one on over the summer. This is using Knitting for Olive Pure Silk Yarn, which is a fingering weight silk yarn. I used 2.75 millimeter needles for this. Some of my testers sized up to like maybe even four millimeters. So I guess I knit loosely, but um, it makes this really nice drapey fabric. This is a barrette silk, which is like a raw silk. So it doesn't have shine. It's like a very matte finish. But the nice thing about silk is that it's kind of cool for the winter, especially when you have some like drape and breeziness to it, but it also can be warm. Sorry, it's cool for the summer, but it can also be warm for the winter. So it's like kind of just an interesting fiber in that sense. I am really proud of this design, to be honest. It has lace along all of the hems and then also along the center front. And that was like the main thing I wanted to achieve with this. And then I designed this to have slightly positive ease at your bust, your waist, and your hips. Um, a little bit more positive ease at your waist and hips. But because this fabric is so lightweight and because silk is so drapey, that I feel like it still gives you like a very figure hugging silhouette, but it doesn't have that like stick to the skin kind of thing that like, I wasn't happy with with some of these earlier ones where I was using a lot of negative ease and like a stretchier fiber. And I used um, like vertical darts for the shaping on this one. You can kind of see this like line here almost of where the increases and decreases happen. It's kind of subtle because um, they're spaced out, but that adds increases and decreases along these like princess seams that are at the front and the back. And I think that is like really pretty. I think that's one of my favorite shaping techniques now. Um, I did use vertical bust darts in a previous pattern I made, the Thine Own Top, but they were much more like visible because I did them a lot faster. And I guess I use them on my Prima pullover too, but I really like them in stockinette as well. And I just think it adds a really flattering shape. And I like that this adds a little bit more volume at your hips too. And I like to wear it so that it opens up a little bit to show kind of the front of my jeans, but it still is like a little bit longer of a silhouette. I also use cap sleeves um, and I find them to be really fun and easy to knit using short rows. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this one. In terms of ranking this one, definitely one of my favorite designs and projects of the year in terms of working on it. I felt really happy with like how the ease turned out. I feel really happy with the general process. I didn't really have to frog anything. And I also um, met one of my goals of having lace on a project this year by having lace on this one. And that was kind of a fun experience. This is like a very simple <laughs> lace thing. And it's just, I think about eight rows of it. So not enough to be overwhelming if you are not comfortable or familiar with lace, which I've never done anything in lace before minus a bookmark. So this was like a good test the waters project for me. So in terms of wear for this one, I think I've probably worn it maybe like 10 times, um, which feels pretty good for not having had that exciting of a life to wear a cute top out <laughs> this fall. Um, but I do think that this is like going to be a staple for me because it is basically in the perfect Venn diagram of my favorite things to wear, which is like a little bit sexy and flirty, but also very comfortable. So I like to wear this one with just a bra underneath so you have like a glimpse of skin down the front, but you can wear it with a cami too. But I think that gives it like a little bit of sexiness. So it feels like it's fun for like a night out. But since the silk is such a lightweight fabric, it basically feels like you're not really wearing anything. So I feel like that's a perfect like combination for a night out. Like you can wear it out to dinner and you're showing a little skin, but you also don't feel overexposed, I guess. I will also say it was very gratifying that this one worked out because obviously I had all of these like fit issues with some of the other things that I had been working on and I wasn't feeling that 
happy about them. And this one, since it's a fingering weight project, so it's kind of a longer term project. And I really didn't feel like I had a good sense of how it was going to fit until I added the lace and blocked it. And it was just very gratifying that it ended up being exactly, pretty much exactly the fit that I wanted. So yeah, I'm gonna rank this one for sure in my like top projects and top worn items for the year. I'm just really happy with this one. My next project that I finished, I feel a little bit unsure about how I, whether I, I count this as like a finished object or not because I finished it fully, but then I ended up tearing it back and I still haven't finished that version of it, is this cardigan that I made. So this one is using Cascade Superwash 220. Um, so that's a super wash yarn and I made this one. I think I shared a video where I put the buttons on it. I don't know if I ever showed it fully finished in my podcast episodes, but um, I ended up being not entirely happy with the length. So that was partly because it's a super wash. I did end up throwing it in the dryer because when I blocked it, it really loosened up. And not only did that make like the sleeves and everything too long, but it also just made the fabric too gappy for me, like for a cardigan. Um, so I did throw it in the dryer, but then it shrank a little bit too much. And in the end, it was just way too cropped. It, it felt like cropped maybe the right length for wearing with a dress. If you want like kind of a shrunken little cardigan that still highlights your waist. But I just was feeling like too exposed wearing it. If I wore it with jeans, for instance, it ended like an inch above where the top of my jeans are, which are high-waisted. Um, so that just felt too cropped for like everyday wear for me. So. I ended up tearing back, like because I worked the body and then I picked up the stitches along the front and then I picked up the collar. That meant that if I wanted to add more length to the body, I had to undo the collar and the central button band, et cetera. I like had to undo everything, um, which is totally fine. But that's why I haven't really finished it is that it was like a longer undertaking than just adding one extra inch to the bottom. I added like two and a half inches. You can kind of see this line of where um, like blocked versus unblocked. I think that that will even out after I block it, but I added that much length. Um, I do want to shrink it less when I block it again in the dryer, just to like have it be a little bit more open um, and lengthen the sleeves a little bit. And then I started again, adding um, the button band on one side. Another thing I wanna change when I, when I pick up the stitches for the collar is this time I'm gonna add a little bit more length to just the back of the collar using short rows. And I think that will make it so that the, the collar just folds down better without needing it to be so big in the front. And I want to add a buttonhole to the collar so I can wear it buttoned up to almost like a mock turtleneck, I guess. So obviously I'm not wearing it out in this state because it's like completely unfinished, but I did like, I added buttons and everything. So I really did finish it and I wore it twice, which is not great to be honest for a cardigan in the fall. But overall, every time I wore it, I just felt like I wish it was a couple inches longer. So. I think that once I finish adding all the, you know, details back on so that it can actually be a functioning cardigan, I think I will wear this one a lot more and I'm happy with it. I do like the idea of using a larger gauge yarn. I can't remember if this one is DK or worsted. I'll add that in, but I like the idea of using like an Aran weight yarn and making one with a lot more positive ease. I'm just craving like a big cozy cardigan. Um, so this one doesn't quite fit that role. Although I wasn't planning, I like, I didn't want it to be a big cozy cardigan when I made it. Um, but now I'm feeling like I have that craving in my wardrobe. So I'm not sure I might, um, I do still want to finish this one and see this one through, but yeah, I might like cast on another version that's a little bit heavier and bigger, um, but still like the same general idea. Cause I do think that this is really cute and cozy. And I think that the collar and the ribbing adds this like kind of vintage preppy thing to me. It's kind of like the cardigan version of my prep school pullover sweater. So yeah, this one, I mean, I did wear it at least, and I think I will wear it a lot more once I add those changes, but it's not in my like top worn list at all. Okay, next I have this silk camisole. So this one I shared in like another podcast episode. I actually cast this one on in 2022, so over a year ago. And then I just let it like languish because I needed to redo the bottom hem and this yarn, it's three strands of Knit Picks Luminance Lace, which is a lace weight silk yarn held together. And I had a lot of tangly issues with the balls that I wound up. So I was just frustrated about that. So I kind of avoided this one for like eight, nine months. I did finally finish it. I've worn it a couple of times. Um, I need to finish weaving in a couple last ends. So funny enough, I was avoiding weaving in the final ends on this one because I was worried that um, when I blocked it, the silk might stretch out a little bit and like the ends 
might get a little bit looser and I wanted to leave more of like a cushion room, I guess. Like I didn't want to cut them super close in case things started to unravel. However, hilariously, I was being so, so precious about like not wet blocking this one yet. And then I actually found this in like a soaking wet ball in the bottom of my washing machine. So somehow it just got thrown into the wash like regular cycle with the rest of my clothing and it's totally fine. So I don't know what to make of that. Now I guess I have nothing to fear in life. Your worst nightmare could come true and maybe it's not that bad. So that was a nice little lesson from this one. Yeah, so I wore this one to Rhinebeck on one day and then I wore this um, another time, just like under a cardigan. With here, when I wear it without a bow tied in the center. Um, oh yeah, cause I, sorry, I didn't say this. I designed it so that you can wear it with a bow cinched in the front. I find that for this one, when I wear it without the bow cinched, it's just a little bit too wide and you can see my bra peeking out. I do think it can be kind of cute to have like a little lacy bra moment, um, but that makes it like less casual. <laughs> of a top to wear. Um, I do find this one to be very, very comfortable though. So I do like that about it. And I think that once I am stopping lazy and just like seam in these last little strings hanging out, I will wear this one more. I just don't wear it now because I feel worried that I'm going to have a little wardrobe malfunction of showing off my unwoven ends. In terms of projects, this one was a little bit frustrating to work on because it was so stop and go for over a year. Um, and it's not quite in my most worn projects, but I am definitely happy with this one. So next up, I have my tarot card sweater. So I cast the first version of this one on actually at the very end of June over the summer solstice. That one was using a different yarn. I used some of two superwash yarns. That one, the superwash nature of the yarn like stretched everything out of proportion. And so I redid it. Um, I asked Cascade if they would be willing to send me some yarn to sponsor this design and they kindly said yes. This is the Cascade Sport 220. It's on a US 5 needle, which is I think 3.75 millimeters. And, um, I mean, I'm really happy with this one. This one is like one of the most meaningful projects I feel like I've worked on for knitting. I feel like this one has the most like symbolic meaning to it. The star card represents like hope, renewal, inspiration, light at the end of darkness. And I was having kind of a hard time this year and I feel like this project was like a really nice reset, both creatively and like emotionally. This was just a vision that I had in my head that I felt really strongly about. And so that was like very fulfilling to actually see that through. I drew this chart by hand in Stitch Fiddle. Um, it's kind of like my interpretation of the star card. And I was really happy with that. I really liked that experience. Like I like expressing myself creatively in different ways. And I feel like, I feel like before knitting, that wasn't a huge part of my life. And I'm really glad to have like refound that. And so it was fun to explore a little bit of like illustration-y stuff with that. Um, and then also just the act of making it in terms of like emotionally, I felt like it was a really positive thing to be like focused on in terms of like viewing this as a turning point and like I would have this bright future filled with like creative fulfillment and inspiration and opportunity and hope. And I feel like that was just like a really nice positive way to spend that time, I guess. Like you think about all the time that you spend with a sweater, um, you know, you hold like every inch of it in your hands as you make it. And I think that focusing on like the meaning behind this card and a sense of abundance of opportunity and a bright future was like a very good turning point for me as I worked on it. So for that reason, this is like probably my favorite project of the year. I also have worn this, I mean, I guess at least a dozen times. I wore it for the first time at Rhinebeck and that was like such an amazing experience. It felt so good to have this thing that I had like poured all of this emotion and time into and then to wear it and feel like it was like getting charged up with all of this like positive knitting community energy was just a really special element to this project too. Like that was just a nice way to like seal in all of this positivity and like feeling connected and feeling grounded and feeling inspired. So in terms of techniques, this one is actually knit flat. So I'll show a video. I try to be really good about taking a progress video for this one because I almost never do that because I'm always just like, no, I want to keep knitting. Um, I was inspired too by Midsummer Knits because she has iconic progress videos that she shares to Instagram. So I kind of chose to knit this in a way that would make it easy to try on along the way. So first I knit the upper back panel and then I just put those stitches on hold. And then I picked up the stitches for each shoulder and I joined them under the neck. And then I added the collar because I don't know, I feel like adding a collar, I mean, it definitely affects the fit of the top. So that's like nice to get that out of the way first to know that you're happy with the neckline. But also I feel like it just makes things look so much more sweatery. So that kind of feels good to just get that out of the way and like feel like you have what looks like a real sweater on. 
Um, and then I did the front panel. And the reason I worked in the front panel next was I wasn't sure how long I wanted it to be, like how much white space above and below the card. And I also wasn't sure like how would this yarn work out with the color work, would the color work drag like it was on the other version? Would I be happy with the proportions of it? So I wanted to like answer that question and get that out of the way. I was really happy with it, so that was great. And then I finished the back and then I seamed up the sides and then I picked up the sleeves and knit them in the round because I like knitting in the round when I can, but you can't really with this color work because you don't have anything on the back. So it wouldn't make sense to carry the yarn all the way around. I don't know, I looked up like one or two videos on how to do intarsia in the round and it seemed complicated and all the examples were socks. So that did not give me a lot of confidence. So I ended up using um, ladder back jacquard on this one to manage the long floats because I also just hate intarsia. So I could use stranded knitting flat and then use the ladder back jacquard to catch long floats. I'll talk about this one more in a podcast episode. I, I know I'm so criminally delayed on that. I actually recorded an entire podcast episode talking about this one and my camera wasn't focused for any of it, so I can't post it. So I'm gonna record that again, but I love how this turned out. So by the time I'm posting this, probably this will already be in testing. Um, but yeah, this this is like definitely a most worn and a favorite project. And I'm also really happy with the yarn. I find that this yarn is, it's like wooly enough to stick to itself for color work, but it's soft enough for me to wear it without anything underneath and I have pretty sensitive skin. So that can be a little bit tough for me to find sometimes, but this one is definitely like top tier in terms of both the act of making it and how much I've actually worn it in my wardrobe. Okay, next up, I have another version of that tie front top. So this one, I actually have the ribbon in it from the last time I wore it. This one is using a sock yarn that I had. I just got in like a big stash from a friend this year and I don't really like to knit socks. It's from this dyer called Fall for November. It seems like she's retired from dyeing, but you can probably find this type of yarn base from other indie dyers and it's 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. So it has this really like, lush, squishy feel to it. Um, I knit this one the same way that I did with the silk one. So um, the top panel is like knit flat lengthwise, I guess, like this. And then you pick up stitches and knit the body in the round. And I'm really happy with this one. Um, I did add a slight like curved front hem to it. It has a folded hem. Um, full disclosure, I actually did make these straps on my knitting machine instead of by hand because I don't know, my machine was set up anyway and this yarn is like a small enough gauge that I can do it on the knitting machine. So it was kind of nice to just do that instead of have to like knit flat or do an eye cord by hand. Um, I've worn this one twice so far. It's just really comfortable. It feels great on my skin. Um, I feel like this color isn't quite my color. Like I tend to look better in more like jewel tones, but I do think that it's nice. I really don't have that much medium green in my wardrobe and I like the, um, I like the kind of tonal striping. I feel like I, I really gravitate towards solids, but I like this sort of like semi-solid tonal. I guess I cast this one on when I was taking like a little fall train ride on Amtrak with my friends this, this fall. So that was actually very cozy. Otherwise, I don't even really remember knitting the body of it. So I guess not very memorable, but not in a good way or a bad way. It was just nice, probably pretty mindless stockinette in the round. So I would say this one is not one of my favorite, favorite projects of the year because I guess it wasn't really standout um, compared to some of the ones that felt like a big knitting and grading achievement. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely happy with this one. And I feel like it's like mid, mid high tier on like how much wear I think I'm gonna get out of it. Okay, next that leads me to this cardigan that I have on right now. So this is again, using the same base yarn as this, which is that 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere fingering weight sock yarn. And for this one, I also held a strand of mohair with it using Lana Grossa silk hair. I'm really, really happy with this mohair. I can be a little bit sensitive to mohair and I find that some are just a little too itchy for me, like Barocco Ariel, a little too itchy for me. Uh, knitting for Olive Merino feels so great on my hand. Don't like it anywhere near my neck if I can avoid it. Um, but this one feels very luxurious and soft and doesn't bother me at all. This one is a two by two rib. It's on US four, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> needles. Um, this one has just gone into testing, which is really exciting. And I actually made two versions of this, like the same cardigan went through a transformation. So the last time you saw this on this channel, it was a tie front cardigan. I actually since then added an entire button band with double knitting for the tie front version that had little holes so I could swap out the um, ribbon that I was using. And then I found that I wasn't wearing that as much as I thought I would. Um, I'll talk about this more in like a full podcast episode, but in my wardrobe, I realized that I feel like I actually wanted a more classic button down. Nice thing about how I did this one is that you can just rip back the button band without changing anything else. So I redid it and I just added a button band with 
regularly spaced buttonholes and added these buttons that I got from like a, they're vintage buttons from a sewing shop. I'm really, really happy with this cardigan. This is definitely gonna be one of my favorite projects, I think because this yarn just felt so luxurious to knit. Um, I really like details on it. I like having a v-neck. Um, I am just a v-neck girly. This just feels like a kind of classic staple, but it has kind of allowed me to change my camera overheated and now the sun is like fully giving up on us for the day. But I ended up being really happy with a couple of different things about this. One is that I used, again, these like really long, extra long cozy sleeves. I didn't add any buttonholes in these ones, like for thumb holes, um, but I just really like having a long cozy sleeve. It just adds to my life. Um, Another thing I like about this one is that it has basically neutral ease at the bust, um, but then it has pretty positive ease along the waist. And I just find that really comfortable to wear. I like the silhouette. I like that this mohair blend gives kind of drape to the fabric. This ribbing, when you block it, ends up opening up. So it just like kind of chills open, as opposed to like if you used um, fully wool, like if you didn't use anything with drape, it might uh, block a little bit more condensed but that lets it have this sort of like easy drape to it. So I'm really, really happy with that. I find it very comfortable, easy to wear. I think that this button front version has a nice like classic look to it. Um, I guess my camera randomly stopped recording. Anyway, I love that cardigan. It's definitely one of my favorite projects and top wears for the year. My last 2023 projects were just a bunch of headbands that I made that I made a couple of them as gifts, but then I got COVID over Christmas, so I haven't given them yet. And then I made um, a couple because I did a little pop-up, which was a total flop, but that's okay. And um, now those will go as repurposed gifts. I made a tutorial for knitting this one. I'm gonna give these as gifts. Actually, I'll probably keep one for myself, but I do have a YouTube tutorial that I added for these double knit headbands. Um, this is using some of the mohair from this sweater too. And I think I'm gonna give this to my boyfriend's mom for Christmas because she's kind of like earthy style. It's really, really soft and warm. And then this one was honestly kind of a failed experiment. I tried adding mohair to this yarn and then brushing it out because I thought it would be a really cool like halo effect. Um, I feel like it looks like it has mange or something. So. That's okay, sometimes things are failures. Those are my hand knit projects from like the second half of this year. I'm honestly carrying over a lot of like works in progress that I just did not wrap up before the end of the year. I'm excited to work on a bunch of them still, so there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm also gonna save my machine knit projects for another video because my camera's gonna die mostly. And I know that like not everyone crosses over between hand knitting and machine knitting. So I don't know if that would be interesting to hand knitters. So in terms of my final rankings, my absolute most worn projects, I think my very top tier is my Prima pullover. That is like absolutely my most worn sweater, including store-bought sweaters, anything. One of my most worn pieces of clothing this year. I just feel like it's the perfect like comfy, cozy combo. So like I wear that one out a lot for like dinner or drinks. That's my favorite. Then I think probably this cardigan is like a close tie with that one. And then my Ophelia blouse and my tarot card sweater I think are my like all time favorite things that I made this year. Those are absolutely my favorite. And then I think the like tie front tank tops that I made are like in the next tier down and that I think I'll still get quite a bit of wear and that cardigan that I made. And then the rest of them, I mean, I talked about some of the reasons why I don't wear them as much. Two of the Thine Own tops I made this year, I've worn the white one quite a few times, like probably at least 10 times. So that's definitely in my like top list. And then um, what else? I made another top that I called the Sweet Nothings. I don't have a pattern out for it yet. I wanna do that this spring. That is my final ranking. Honestly, I feel like my skills have grown so much even in this last year in ways that I didn't expect or think that I needed to. I've learned so much more about fit, so much more about ease. I'm feeling really good about the things I'm making right now and I feel like I've been making things that I've been wearing a lot, especially in like the second half of this past year. So I feel really excited for all the projects that I have coming up in 2024. Knitting is just like an endlessly deep and engaging hobby for me. There's always new things to learn. There's always new things to make. So thank you for joining and following along in the process. I guess subscribe and follow along if you want to see what this next year of knitting will bring. I am really excited to talk about some of these projects more in depth with you in my next podcast episode, and then also share some of my 2024 knitting goals and look back on how I did on my 2023 goals. So those are some videos that will be coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching. I forgot if I already said this, I'm Tamara, and I'll see you again soon, I hope.